In this video, we'll walk through the process of installing Status Enterprise on your computer. Before we start, we'll go over some basic system requirements. Status Enterprise requires a PC running a Windows operating system of Windows XP, Service Pack 2, or higher. If you're using a Windows Server system, it will have to be at least 2003, Service Pack 3, or higher. Uh, your system will need to have a full installation of the Windows.NET Framework 4.0 or higher. The system I'm installing it on today is running Windows 8.1. Uh, there are some additional optional requirements depending on how you'll be using Status Enterprise. If you'll be using OPCDA data sources, you'll need to have the OPCDA core components installed, and we'll come back to that later. If you will be using the Status Enterprise Web Gateway, you will need to have Windows IIS installed before installing Status Enterprise. And if you'll be using a SQL Server database, you're going to need to have SQL Server 2008 or higher installed. And more on that later as well. Okay, so let's start the installation. Uh, assuming you have the Getting Started Guide that you received after requesting your trial download, You'll find the Status Enterprise installation link on the fourth page, right here. You just click the link and your default web browser should begin downloading the installation file. Once the download is complete, we'll open the EXE to start the installation wizard. All right, once that's completed, you'll just click Next on this Welcome screen here, and that will bring you to the Software License Agreement. Read through it, and select the checkbox next to I Accept the License Agreement right here, and click Next to proceed. This will bring you to the Select Features window. Uh, by default, all features of the system are selected for installation, but there are many situations where you may not want the full system to be installed. For instance, if you have a server where you want to run just the status server and or the data connector, and then you have the model designer and or graphic design clients installed on a different system, or vice versa, you can customize the installation here. So let's say you just want the server applications. You can select the box next to the designer apps. Select the entire feature will be unavailable option. The installer will now exclude all of the designer applications. You can do the same thing for the runtime applications and for the live data application. You can also exclude individual applications if you do not want to exclude an entire set. For instance, if you are installing the server applications, but you don't, you're not going to need the internet gateway or the sensor server. You can select the boxes on the submenu items here to exclude these individual applications. Alternatively, if you want to install just the designer applications on the machines where your engineers and/or your graphic designers will work on your data model or your mimics. You can install just the applications needed on those client machines and they can connect to your status server remotely. You can do the same if you have a machine dedicated to running the data connector service. Any of these client applications can connect remotely to your status server so you do not need to install the entire system on every computer. Or for instance if you wanted just the uh, designers here you could select that and have the entire feature unavailable for your server applications. For this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and install the entire Status Enterprise system. If you're installing the server applications on this machine, you'll now see the database selection window. Um, if you were not server installing the server applications, it would actually skip this one to the next screen that we'll see in a minute. But for um, the database selection window, you're going to be given the option of choosing between SQLite or SQL Server. Uh, for evaluation or testing purposes, we recommend using SQLite. Uh, there is no manual setup required. It is easier and it works just fine for smaller projects. Uh, for larger, more complex projects, you're going to want to use SQL Server. Now SQL Server will require some manual setup. 
which I'll go over in a few minutes after I finish the installation wizard. But after you selected your database type, click next to continue to the destination folder window. If you were not installing the server applications on this machine, this would have been the next one you see after uh, the component selection window. Now, by default, Status Enterprise installs to a bSCADA folder in your program files. You'll see that path right here. Click Next to continue to the Start Menu window. Here you can create a Start Menu group name and decide whether shortcuts will be created for all users or just the currently logged in user. Click Next to continue to the Ready to Install window. Here you can click Next to begin the installation or click Back to modify your installation settings. Uh, if you just click Next here, the installation will begin. When the installation is finished, you'll be notified that Status Enterprise has been installed successfully and will be able to choose whether or not you want to run the application launcher. By default, the application launcher will run after you click Finish. The application launcher is a quick and easy way to access all of the applications that were installed in your, or that were included in your installation. And when the application launcher opens, you'll see the various applications that are part of Status Enterprise listed here by clicking on the advanced checkbox it'll expose some of the other applications. Um, you've got the designers here, runtime under this category, your status server console, data connector, sensor server, and uh, various utilities that are packaged with the system as well. And you also have access to the user guide from the application launcher. Now, if you installed the status server and elected to use SQL Server for your database, some additional setup is required. This next step is detailed in the Status Enterprise User Guide Part 7 Status Server under Section 3. And you can access that by visiting SCADAUniversity.com. Visit the documentation page. And you'll see Part 7 of the User Guide Status Server right here. Open that and you can navigate to part 3, setting up SQL Server. And those instructions are detailed right here. Now you follow the steps listed on this page to complete the setup of your Status Enterprise system. What these steps do is they allow you to create a new user or associate an existing SQL user with Status Enterprise and create your SQL Server database and log file. Now, if you'll be using the Status Enterprise Web Gateway, you will also need to install Windows IIS, or Internet Information Services, before installing Status Enterprise. This will also require .NET Framework 4.5 or higher. The steps to install IIS vary depending on your operating system. In the case of Windows 8, 8.1, or Windows 10, you can access IIS from the control panel by selecting Get Programs from under the Programs heading. This will open the Programs and Features part of the control panel. This can also be accessed by using the Windows Run box to run appwiz.cpl. When you're here, you click on Turn Windows Features On or Off in the sidebar to the left, which will open the Windows Features dialog. You just make sure there's a check mark in the box next to Internet Information Services. Uh, in some cases, you'll see that the box is not checked but shaded in this way. What that means is that a certain subset of those features have been installed, but not the entire set. In the case of the Internet Information Services, you are going to want the entire set, so be sure there's a check mark in this box here, which may require going into some of these submenus and manually selecting the features. And when you have a check mark in this box, you click on OK. Windows will then add IIS to your system. If you plan to use an OPC DA data source with Status Enterprise, you'll also need to install the OPC DA core components. 
These are included with your Status Enterprise install, and you can access them by searching for OPC Core Components from start. You'll choose the version that is correct for your operating system, whether 32-bit or 64-bit. This opens up the install wizard. You agree to the license agreement. Choose an installation folder. I'll just leave it as the default for now. And continue to click Next until the installation begins. And once that installation is complete, you'll be able to use OPC DA data sources in the Status Enterprise Data Connector.